Hi, my name is Elizabeth Garofalo. I'm the Program and Marketing Manager at Red Tomato. I'm excited to talk to you today about one of my favorite subjects, farming. There's a good chance you are watching this video because you work for a farm that is eco-certified, or perhaps you work for a farm that follows eco-certified practices without the certification. Either way, we're going to spend a few minutes discussing where eco-certified comes from, what it is, why it works, and a few ideas to help you talk to farm visitors about it. EcoCertified is a brand and certification mark that lives under the organizational umbrella of Red Tomato, the parent nonprofit company. Red Tomato's larger purpose is to work with farms like yours to access sales markets and build relationships between growers and wholesalers, retailers, scientists, and among the growers themselves. EcoCertified is Red Tomato's flagship program created in 2005 to work specifically with apple growers in the Northeast. The program is created to distinguish local fruit growers who go above and beyond in their farming practices to tell their stories and to ensure their fruit reaches more people and their orchards thrive for generations to come. Eco-certified is the best way to grow sustainable fruit in the climate and growing conditions here in the Northeast, where growers face intense pest and weather challenges. The protocol was developed with agricultural scientists and specialists from universities across the Northeast, as well as the IPM Institute of North America, who maintains the protocol. The protocol is rigorous, scientifically verified, independently audited, and ensures the most environmentally sound growing methods for our climate are used while maintaining the economic viability of farms. Farms are audited each year by a third-party organization. Red Tomato recognizes that farm sustainability and viability go beyond the fields. True sustainability incorporates the health and well-being of everyone on the farm and the communities in which the farms live, not just what happens on the tractor. The protocol is a holistic document in that it recognizes all decisions made on the farm are connected and balance must be achieved among them for success. The protocol includes practices relating to operations, food safety and management, ecosystem and water conservation, soil health, orchard floor enhancement, pest management, pesticide risk reduction, pollinator protection and biodiversity, and energy and waste management. There are three different chapters within the protocol. One covers overall farm management. This helps ensure, among many other things, the farm is using practices that protect and conserve water resources and that their field crews are provided with adequate and dignified facilities. Another chapter covers crop-specific management guidelines for apples and stone fruit, respectively. EcoCertified provides a level of differentiation in the marketplace. It lets consumers know that the grower who carries this mark has gone beyond basic requirements to protect pollinators and preserve biological diversity in the process of making on-farm decisions. Integrated pest management is a decision-based process involving the coordinated use of multiple tactics for optimizing the control of all classes of pests in an ecologically and economically sound manner. IPM is a set of strategies that can be used on all kinds of farms, including organic. When it comes to the field side of the farm, integrated pest management is the reigning principle, but explaining it to visitors who don't have any experience with it can get sticky fast. One of the biggest challenges with trying to explain IPM is that, even though we know that there are many different pests we have to protect our crops from, when we try to explain this to consumers, often they can be disturbed by the very idea of pests. Apple, maggot, fly, ew. This can really derail a conversation, making it nearly impossible to get your point across. Is this fruit organic? If you have not had a visitor ask you this question yet, chances are you will soon. This is a common question for people to ask at a time when health concerns around food safety are often on the forefront of people's minds. We need to be prepared to have productive conversations around healthy alternatives to organic agriculture especially when raising organic tree fruit in the Northeast is not commercially viable. Remember, there are some folks who have already made up their minds and aren't going to be receptive to your explanations, and that's okay. More often than not, though, visitors want to know and understand what happens on the farm, and you get to help them get there. When explaining agricultural practices, it is important to lead with farming and not with the idea of food. One way to think about this is talk about the practice, not the product. For example, each decision we make around managing our farm is designed to protect pollinators and other beneficial insects. We don't put anything on our trees when our insect allies are in the orchard. 
We create and maintain habitats that provide shelter and food for native pollinators and predatory insects. By identifying, preserving, and creating areas with a wide diversity of plants, we support a broad range of insect and other animal life. By referring to how the farm is run, you are inviting folks to think about the whole farm ecosystem, not just the food they eat. Food gets deeply personal, evoking a sense of individualism, specifically how the food they eat impacts their health, which can be pretty unproductive. And it sidelines the farm itself and how all that happens there is a part of the larger community in which it operates. By focusing on farming, people have the opportunity to connect with the farm and to begin to understand just how complex farming really is. You have the opportunity when engaging in conversation with farm visitors to provide memorable and immersive experiences. Orchards experience a number of different types of damage to their crops. Codling moth is one insect that can cause significant damage to orchards, especially to apple and pear crops. To manage and mitigate the impact of codling moth infestations, some orchardists employ mating disruption. In essence, what mating disruption does is flood the orchard with the perfume of female moths, confusing the males. If a visitor is interested in an example of a management practice, try explaining mating disruption. One of the insect management strategies many orchards use is mating disruption. Dispensers, some of which look like a red bread bag twist tie, are infused with a mating pheromone which disperses throughout the orchard, thoroughly confusing the male moths that are there looking for females to mate with. This pheromone mimics the female mating scent. Males get confused and end up chasing females that don't exist. It prevents the male insects from reaching females, therefore her eggs have no babies or larvae in them. Usually it's the babies that cause damage to the fruit. Mating pheromone for one insect does not affect another. Bees and other animals are not interested in or harmed by moth mating pheromone. This strategy can be costly, both in terms of labor, time, and cost. But many growers find it well worth it to disrupt the damage caused by codling moth. Remember to start the conversation off with farming, not food. When you lead with food, people tend to forget that the conversation is about farming practices. By steering the conversations towards farming, you are showing the importance of farms in your visitors' communities and the complexities of making management decisions that work for the farm and the environment. Emphasize the importance of farms in the community. Communities with thriving farms have thriving farm economies, like the job you have. Farming operations maintain open land and provide opportunities for people to get outdoors and in touch with nature through pick-your-own operations and other on-farm activities. Your farm visitors are an integral part of this community. Try using the tightrope metaphor. Running a successful farm is a balancing act. Each step a farmer takes as they cross that tightrope requires careful consideration and execution. Just one misstep can lead to disaster. Every year, our growers perform this amazing balancing act through careful thought of each crop and business decision. Try telling science-rich stories about on-farm practices. Remember the mating disruption story and habitat protection. These are just a few of the many ways in which your farm works in collaboration with nature. Eco-certified approaches help farmers balance the wisdom of the past with the possibilities of the future. We have a few resources available for you online. There will be links to those in the chat below this video and they will be provided to you by your employer as well. Remember your dedication to creating a rich and authentic experience allows visitors to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life, reconnect with the land, and gain a newfound appreciation for the hard work and dedication that goes into producing the food we enjoy. Your efforts truly enrich the farm visit, leaving visitors with lasting memories and a greater awareness of the importance of sustainable and responsible agriculture.